Well, I think it's so important to first understand what value is. Value has been defined as achieving the best outcomes that matter to patients in the context of what it costs. So value-based healthcare tries to indeed support these interventions that have the most benefit to patients. So it's actually balancing cost and outcome. And in that context, you could see it also a bit as uh, health economic evaluations have been doing. They uh, generate data about accessibility and affordability of new interventions. But whereas economic evaluations have very often, well, and incorrectly been uh, interpreted as cost-cutting uh, exercises, this is definitely not the case for value-based healthcare, and uh, it puts really the patient in the center. So from that perspective, it really tries to bring the best treatments to the patients. Well, value-based healthcare is not really focusing on individual uh, patients. It's really more a system to evaluate new healthcare interventions. But because it centers on the outcome for the patients, of course, if we can promote the best treatments to come onto the market and to be available to patients, then this access to new technologies, new interventions will benefit each individual patient. Yes, there are. There are actually uh, several, and there are three that have been used quite extensively. And that's the ESMO Magnitude of Clinical Benefit Scale, there's the ASCO Value Framework, and there's NCCN Blocks. And they have been developed by professional associations, and they have been really targeted to oncology, but mostly focus on uh, cancer drugs, more so than on local regional cancer treatments. And they have been used quite extensively in the last years to evaluate new interventions and to make them accessible to patients. Well, there are a lot of recommendations that have been made in the paper, so I will just take you through them. The first thing is that you should really realize that local regional cancer treatments, and then we mean radiation oncology and surgical oncology, are quite different in the way that the intervention is performed than uh, pharmaceutical interventions. For example, before going onto the market, they do not need anything else than proof safety. So that means that outcome has not been uh, developed prior to launching the new technology onto the market. That means that this kind of outcome uh, generation, so effectiveness, efficacy, but also costing, cost effectiveness, should be done after the new uh, technology has been bought by the healthcare prov uh, provider. So that means that the investment comes early into the development phase. Also, uh, they are very much related to the operator. Um, um, they are very much operator dependent. So that means that there are learning curves associated with the use of these new technologies. Um, also, they, are, um, they very often focus on long-term effects, decreasing long-term toxicity, for example. And lately, uh, lastly, uh, they very often go in a more incremental way. They develop in a more incremental way. So for all these reasons, it's much more difficult to um, uh, do randomized controlled trials uh, on these uh, new interventions. And this is exactly what uh, the other scales have been focusing on. In the same context, the outcome measures that are used in the values uh, frameworks that are now available, they typically use endpoints that are typical for randomized controlled trials and for getting the drugs on the market. So that means overall survival, disease-free survival, toxicity, response. But it is questioned whether these outcomes are the best to really, um, are the most relevant for radiation oncology and surgery. And we think that probably they are not and that there are other like, for example, functional status, uh, organ preservation might be additional outcome measures that we need. And lastly, it was also highlighted that these frameworks were not developed in a multi-stakeholders um, perspective. So, for example, patients, patient uh, advocates, public were not involved in the development of these. So what the project has been um, concluding is that although they are very valuable, these value frameworks, they are not optimally designed to capture the specificities of radiotherapy and, and, and surgical oncology. So we think that there's more work to be done to create additional uh, value frameworks that capture um, radiation oncology and surgery in a better way, actually.
Well, we do think, uh, well, we are uh, really convinced that if we would be able to uh, deploy value-based healthcare in a much better way, then we would be able to better select these new interventions that uh, give the best benefit to the patient. Because, you know, there are many, many new interventions coming onto the market and the budgets, unfortunately, are restricted. So it's really very important to choose these that give the best benefit to the patients. And by doing so, we will use the limited resources and, and budgets in a most optimal way to get the best for the patient outcome.